Hello, it's Jennifer from Sea Lemon. Thanks to Hello Bethy for requesting a tutorial on rose mulling. I'm new to this type of painting and I thought it would be fun to try it out and bring you along with me as I show you sort of an introduction to it. Rose mulling is a traditional form of folk art and it originated in Norway. Designs usually consist of florals with round strokes, scrolls, and flowing lines, and typically with a gradient effect. I'll include a Pinterest board link in the video description below, which has a bunch of inspiration to get you going. And if you are new here, make sure you subscribe to my channel, Sea Lemon. I upload something new every week and I'd love for you to join us. So hit that subscribe button. All right, let's get into it. I'll be using green, blue, yellow, red, and white acrylic paint, along with a few brushes, including a flat tip brush, which is essential for this type of painting. First, I recommend doing some practice strokes, and here's how to set the paint up to make a gradient. Dip half of the flat tip brush on one paint and then the other half on the other, and in the middle you're going to meet the two together to make a gradient effect. Keep brushing until you have a nice blend in the middle of those two colors, but you want the solid of those colors to be on the edges of the brush. To keep a steady hand, most painters of rose milling will rest their painter hand on top of their other arm, and this will just prevent a shaky hand, but you don't have to do this, but if you want to try it, go for it. This type of painting consists of two main strokes. This is the C stroke, and I recommend practicing this in both directions. And the other one is an S stroke. It helps to practice these so that your muscle memory in your hand is used to making a nice, clean, steady stroke. And you'll often see these two C strokes facing each other and then a circle stroke. You can combine those two to make a flower. And don't be afraid to go over a stroke that you already did to make it more vibrant with color. And to try a leaf shape, make an S stroke and then fill the other side with a C stroke. And make sure you load your paintbrush back up. As you can see, mine kind of dried out at the end. All right, now onto the main canvas. I'm doing the same type of paint method with the white and green this time. And I'm painting this piece on a 12 by 12 inch piece of cardstock. I'm going for a floral design and this is the stem section. Again, using those same type of C strokes. You might want to sketch out what you want to paint before you do it but you can also wing it and improvise, and that's what I'm doing. And I'm adding circle strokes on the ends of these stems, and then making an S stroke on the end of the entire stem to make a scroll design. All right, now to add a flower, I'm doing the same method I showed you on the practice sheet, using red and white paint and going over these two C strokes and then making a circle stroke in the center. And if you don't like the way something looks, you can always go over it. And to complete this flower, I'm adding one more circle stroke in the center. And I'm going to repeat that same process to make more flowers. You can add other elements like leaves. I'm adding this leaf right next to the flower with a point tip brush. And then going back to my flat tip brush in a new color and making those leaves like I showed on the practice sheet, an S stroke and then a C stroke. And again, you can go over it if it didn't turn out quite right the first time. I'm improvising here and adding stems to the leaves with some more elements on top of that and going around the piece adding more leaves like those ones that I just made. Now I'm going back over the stem to sort of break that solid shape up and I'm doing this with more floral elements, but they are all within that S, C, and circle stroke family. It's up to you what kind of color combo you want to make with this gradient effect. I used white with all my colors, so this is yellow and white, but you could try something like a yellow and red to make an orange in the middle. You can really have fun and experiment with different colors. And now to complete this piece, I'm going back in with my point tip brush and adding more white floral elements. You can also use the white paint on the other shapes to highlight the lighter areas. And here's how my finished piece turned out using the basic rosemaline techniques. 
I noticed a lot of traditional rose mulling has earthy tones, and if you wanted to try a more modern version of this, you could try some neon or vibrant colors. Give this video a thumbs up if you like this type of tutorial, and I would love to see what you make from this, so share your pictures with me on my social links and follow me while you're over there. If you want to see even more art tutorials, check out this playlist right here, it's full of those. And if you want to jump into another decorative project, check out this DIY quatrefoil pattern right here. And be sure to subscribe to my channel Sea Lemon, all of these links will be in the video description below. I will see you guys next time!